to just lead us in some worship as we begin the celebration of the life of Elder Maya Smith. Last minute, and so we're now going into the praise and worship. Bless you. Pleasant good morning. Okay, we gotta lift up the name of Jesus. Even in such a time as this, God is still ready to be praised. Hello, somebody. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So praise Him. Praise Him. Yeah. 
is your name. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah, oh Jehovah, is your name. Mighty warrior, hey. Hallelujah, hallelujah, oh mighty warrior, great in battle, Jehovah in your name, mighty warrior, oh celebration in prayer and ask God's blessing on today. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in today. And I know this is a sad time, but it's also a time of celebration of a legend, of a great man. And so we are going to celebrate his life in style. Amen? Amen. Father, I thank you for today the day that you have made. And we have gathered together to celebrate the life of a great legend, Elder Maya Smith. And so we pray, Heavenly Father, for your Holy Spirit to be right here in our midst. That there will be an anointing on today, that something will come out of today's ceremony, today's celebration. Lives will be touched by what they hear. Something will happen. And the legacy that this man has left will continue. So we thank you for what you're about to do today, that everything will be done in order, in decency, Lord, according to your will. Bless everyone that comes up to speak, that you will give them the strength as they speak, as they give their tribute. Every song that will be sung. I pray for the sermon today, that you will touch the man of God as he delivers the word. So thank you, Heavenly Father, because we know that you are a great God. You saw this day even before the beginning of time. And so we thank you and the church say amen. Amen, amen. 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 You may be seated before we go into the whole, the whole name. Amen. You may be seated wherever you are there are still some seats we're asking to make sure all the all the family members all the seats are here at the front for the family please please come and take your seat and so once again i welcome every I welcome everyone that is here from everywhere, everybody in their respective roles, all the dignitaries, family. I welcome you this morning. And for those of you who are wondering who I am, I am family. Many of you would have known my mother, the late Pastor Ayo, Ayo Smith, or you may have even remembered my brother, Doc Glenton. I'm Glenton's, one of Glenton's younger um, sister, but I'm a Powell. Amen? Amen? And so it is indeed an honor to be here to support the team in moderating um, Elder Maya Goinoff, a man that I've known from when I was about 13 years old. And so today we are going to make sure we send him off in style. And so I just want to welcome Pastor 
Green Huggins and Pastor Phillips who are here today taking part. And to my family, I love you and condolences to everyone. And so, and to the musicians and everyone that is taking part, doing their bit, I welcome you again this morning. So when we come to sing, everybody here should know the songs, them, innit? In it, so we're going to raise our voices and we are going to sing and we're going to do it like how um, Mr. Smith would have wanted us to do as we celebrate his life. And so our hope in him is that there is a land that is fairer than day. In the sweet by and by, how many of you know in the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beauty for sure. Revelation says there'll be no more crying, no more tears. Why? Because God shall wipe away all tears. We're going to raise our voices as we sing the first hymn, There is a land that is fairer than day. Amen. There's a land that is fairer than day. Shut 
Amen. Glory to God. Psalms 34. So can I invite Henry to come and say a prayer right now? God bless you, man of God. Amen. Amen. Shall we praise the Lord? Shall we praise the Lord another time? Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Just bow your hands, reverence to God in prayer. Bless the Lord. It is appointed unto man wants to die but after death there come the judgment our oh, father who art in heaven lord god this moment we gather here in this thanksgiving service lord to worship to praise your name to honor you we give the thanks lord to bringing us here today we ask, Lord God, of your blessing, your guidance, your mercy, your protection. You cover it comprehensively, Lord. Bless everyone, Lord, who gathered here. Father, we ask, oh Lord, you will give us the strength to carry it on for you. Help us, Lord, never to weep, Lord God, like those who have no hope. We have hope, a lively hope in Jesus Christ. So we ask of your blessing. We ask of your deliverance. We ask, oh God, for your grace, your mercy to keep us, Lord. Father, bless more than we can ask of you this morning. Lord, we ask, oh God, that we take, oh God, the bereaved family, oh God, in charge. Comfort the heart, Lord, with your word and help them, Lord, never to lose. The angel of the Lord encampeth around both about them that fear him and deliver him. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth. righteous and the ears are open unto their cry here in the portion of god's holy word yeah. amen can we get a better amen than that amen amen amen, amen, amen. 
whilst um, I'm going to ask St. Elizabeth Technical High School to, to get ready as we sing that little chorus. I'll fly away, oh glory, as they get themselves together. St. Elizabeth Technical High School. I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away when I die. Jesus, before we 
image of love, all flee. Oh, and when they call him Lord of Lord, we will be there. Oh, no, this is just what heaven means to me. Oh, yes, what will it be when we, you know, beyond and turn the throng upon the glassy sea to greet our love and crown Christ forever. Oh, now this is just what heaven means to me. Oh, yes, what will it be when we get over yonder and join the throng upon the glassy sea? Oh, yeah, to greet toil love and crown Christ forever. Oh, now this is just what heaven means to me. from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I just love this scripture. How many of you love this scripture? Once we day, we shall be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. We're going to be caught up to meet him. The songwriter says, caught up to meet him. There'll be what? Joy and happiness, peace divine. So we just want to make sure that we make it in. So I'm going to invite Samantha Sherwood, who is the niece of Elder Maya to come to read our scripture. God bless you. Good afternoon. Oh, good morning. <laughs> our second lesson for today is from 1 Corinthians 15 and through to 58. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in the vain, in vain in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. How many of you know that Elder Meyer's labor was not in vain? Was not in vain. How many of you can wave your hand? 
hands and say you benefited from the labor and the works of Elder Meyer Smith. Every hand in this place should be going up right now. Amen. Amen. How many of you know we're going to be judged for our works and the things that we do? But there's a crown awaiting this man in glory. Amen. For the things that he done and, and the things that he has sold in many lives. And we're going to hear some of that goodness and the legacy of this man. We're going to have a series of tributes right now. Exercise wisdom as you give your tributes. Is that okay? I am not afraid to pull anybody cool and I'm not afraid to put my hand around somebody. So we're going to give our tributes timely today. Amen? Amen? Amen. So I want to invite at this time first tribute, Keith Wellington. Amen. <laughs> members of the clergy, <coughs> members of the bereaved family, distinguished mourners, members of the community, good morning. First of all, I'm contrary to any evidence you may have prior to now or get later, I am not a crybaby. <laughs> also, <laughs> Madam Minister, you indicated that you'll be pulling court ta tails, but let me just acknowledge the fact that I am listed as Keith Wellington. I don't know which cap I am supposed to be wearing, so I'll wear all of them. <laughs> and so let me start by on behalf of the President of the Jamaica Athletics Administrative Association, Mr. Garth Gale share his condolences with the family and friends of LD. Garth and LD were actually college mates and close friends and confidant. However, he is unable to be here today and he sends his best regards. I'd also like on behalf of the Intersecondary School Sports Association to all its members, executive members and principals say condolences too to the family of Eldie, his friends, his colleagues, and his, and his well-wishers. And obviously, I, I must say something on behalf of states. I will say most of what I have to say on behalf of states, but I cannot ignore the fact that Eldie and I shared a personal relationship that went beyond, has lasted over 30 years. And for me, Eldie never grew into an old man. And Eldie never became an old man. And we know that when someone young dies, we mourn even greater because we, we believe that their life would have been cut short. We also know that God knows best and he would not have given you more than what you are due or less than what you are due. So while we mourn the death of a young man, Mr. Eldie Meyer Smith, um, we want to recognize that he lived a full and fruitful life. Many of us in the audience would have benefited significantly from him, not just because of what he was paid to do, but the many things he was involved in as community service. I had early retired from states almost 10 years ago, and I, um, it is ironic, it is ironic that Shola would have responded to his car being in the garage at a particular time of the morning when most retirees would have been sleeping and resting. But Shola found it strange that his car was still in the garage when normally he would have, would have been at States maybe two hours before that. And I think that it, it, is, it symbolizes Eldie's commitment to States as an institution, but more especially to the youngsters he was responsible for. And uh, while I'm, I think I, I'm, I'm giving a little leeway, right? Yeah. Right, I'm, I'm, I'm giving a little leeway. Eldie, Eldie's 40 years at States 
count some more than half of the life of that institution that has produced outstanding scholars, outstanding members of the community. And that 40 years was not spent simply passing time away. Ellie spent those 40 years creating a states that we can all be proud of. I want to just highlight a few, few traits of Ellie. I think everybody knew that he was a stubborn man. He had his ways and he believed in his ways. He backed himself. As a matter of fact, one of the things he said to, he has always said to our younger coaches is that we should pick our winners and back them irrespective of the condition. So we must make up our minds what we want to do and believe in it. Early, I said that he, he never grew into an old man. One of the things of characteristics of old age outside of wisdom is that we usually stick stubbornly to what we are accustomed to. And Ellie spent, initially he spent a few years as, as a successful cricket coach at States, so he had a significant part to play in our dynasty in cricket at States. But a significant portion of his life as a coach at States was spent coaching girls. So Bridget and Sharika and company can attest to what he produced and who he produced. And not only did he produce persons from states, but not many persons know that Ellie was one of those persons who actually had hurdling being done at, in Jamaica for the first time by girls. So it was Ellie who basically fought to get girls to do hurdles at champs. So Dean Hemmings is a direct product of Ellie's um, constant lobby. And for those who don't know either, Ellie started coaching in the days when males were not allowed to be too close to girls. So even Champs, Champs was run exclusively by women. I return to the fact that he, 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 he spent most of his time coaching girls. But there was a time in the late 19, late 2000, Fell, up, fell apart drastically. And I was the vice principal and I, I approached Ellie and said, well, Ellie, we can't look like this. And we, he looked around and he said, you know, I'm going to give up the girls because I think we need the, was responsible for moving states from a point where we had only five boys going to champs, scoring one. Where for the first time in almost 30 years, we were out well, I see it's still pending, but we were basically placed fourth for the first time since 1992. <laughs> as a teacher, as a teacher, Ellie was one of the first persons that I was attached to when I came to States as a mathematics and computer science teacher. He later became my head of department, providing guidance and lessons on how to teach maths, right? And eventually I became vice principal and then principal, and Ellie was one of, well, he was the first person that I was able to promote to vice principal at States. And it wasn't because we were friends, but it was one, because of the passion he had for States, two, his commitment to that passion, and three, the fact that you knew that Ellie was a loyal soldier. You knew that whatever Ellie said he believed in or he supported, you did not. It doesn't matter what you hear being said around him. If you never heard him say it, it means he never said it. Because he was not afraid to speak his mind. And so Ellie was someone. And even with me, I keep persons who are close to us can tell us that we had disagreements, almost violent disagreements, because we are two stubborn persons. But the one thing that never happened was that there was never a moment of malice because it would be done once, once he said what he had to say. In paying tribute to Eldi, it is important that we recognize those persons who he has left behind and who were extremely close to him and who he, who he had he loved them without boundaries. His children, his grandchildren, his community. 
Curry knows that, right? The community meant everything to LD. And so we want to recognize that he would have thought about you. He would have thought about you even on his deathbed. I want to share the words that I, I think he would have said to you if you were here today. It's in the po it's in the form of a poem. Henry Scott Holland, and it is entitled, Death is Nothing at All. Death is nothing at all. I have only slipped away to the next we were to each other that will still, that we still are, sorry. Call me by my old familiar name. Speak the way which you always used. Put no difference in your tone. We're no, no forced ear of solemnity or sorrow. Laugh as we always laughed at the little jokes we enjoyed together. Play, smile, think of me, pray for me. Let my name be ever used, be ever the household word. Let it be spoken without effect, without the trace of a shudder on it. Life means all that it ever meant. It is the same it ever was. There is absolute because I am out of sight. I am waiting for you for an eternal, for an interval. I'm waiting for you for an interval somewhere very near, just around the corner. All is well. Thank you. Come on, let's give Mr. Wellington a bigger round of applause for that insight into the life of Elder Maya Smith. What a relationship. That's a lot of years. Amen? A lot of years. I'm going to ask Coca to get ready. Coca, C-O-C-A-A, -A, followed by the lay magistrates of St. Elizabeth to get yourselves ready for your tribute. And I'd like to invite, if there's anybody standing that would like to sit, we still have some seats here at the, the front, and there's some seats. It, now is an opportunity to come and make your way and have a seat, okay? All right, representation from COCAA. Coca. Thank you, good morning, everybody. Tribute to Elder Maya Smith on behalf of COCA. Elder Maya Smith became president of COCA in 2001 and served for 10 years and he stepped down in 2011. It was under his leadership that COCA school membership expanded from 12 to 42 schools. And this was because of Elder Meyer's constant push and encouragement to have schools such as Holland, Spot Valley, Green Pond, Irwin, Rhodesall, Hopelai enter into the realm of athletics. He presided over the change format for West Champs from a one day meet for boys and a one day meet for girls to a combined three days of championship. LD, under his presidency, we moved from doing entries on just paper to computerize broadsheet results, with points standing available after each event, making final decision. Eldy was very astute. He was very direct. He was a no-nonsense man. He tell you what he what is on his mind, and he leave it as it is. He was our gentle giant. He was our father, he was a mentor, he was a friend, he was faithful to all we ever asked of him. It is on his broad shoulders, coaches like Claude Grant, Roger Miles, Marshall Woolery, Michael McIntosh, 
and many other young coaches were able to stand tall with confidence knowing that they could have done it with the support from Elder Meyer Simmons. Could you clap his involvement in the lives of these young coaches? And all that we do is as a result of Elder Meyer Smith. His leadership spans fear, fearlessness. His leadership was fear. His leadership was one that was very inclusive. And so Coca is in a better place because of Elder Meyer Smith. And so we, we, as under the leadership as well, we had first chance meet, we had a field events meet, and a last chance meet, because LD always believe in giving everybody a fair chance to compete at the national level. May I start to say that LD would even, he was one of the first coaches to identify errors in an athlete and he would be the one to call you and say, Coach, I am suggesting that this is the way it ought to be done. And he would form that bond and he would constantly be checking up on you to see how you are progressing. And so personally, he was a father to me. Every time he would see me, he would say, Maki boy, what are going on? How things? And he was that person that whatever Coco has become, and will become is as a result of Eldemeyer Alexander Smith. May his soul rest in peace and light perpetual shine on him. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Amen. Come on, let's do better than that. I know it's hot, but we are recognizing, we are recognizing this wonderful man who's a legend. Lay Magistrate of St. Elizabeth, who's representing, welcome. Let's give her a round of applause as she comes. It's actually the Justices of the Peace for the Silo region. And may I invite my colleagues, please to join me here. Members of the clergy, distinguished members on the platform and in the audience, bereaved family, members of the Thornton community, well wishers and friends, pleasant morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. On behalf of the Justices of the Peace in the Silo region and the Thornton Community Club, let me extend heartfelt condolences to the Smith family. Losing a loved one is never easy, and we stand with you today as you mourn the loss of a father, grandfather, brother, uncle, cousin, and friend. Romans 14 and verse 8 states, If we live, we live to the Lord. If we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. Mr. Smith was a community person who in former years was always involved in planning activities such as cricket matches to build community vibes and togetherness and form friendships with persons outside of the community. A teacher at heart and a love for teaching, he has invested his time in assisting many young people in this community, including myself, in the free mathematics classes he held at the Thornton Primary School, preparing us for CXC examinations in early 2000. He was family oriented and has molded and helped a lot of young people, many of you are here today, to realize your potential, especially in the area of sports. Mr. Smith was my JP, a justice of the peace for over 20 years. I can attest, and so can you, that um, he has written recommendations for jobs and certified documents for many of us who are seated here today. 
We say thanks to his family for having afforded him the time he served us as we know it was not an easy task. Life is a journey that ends with a destiny and we travel that route but once. Some journeys are smooth while some are rough. Some are winding while some are straight. Some journeys are bumpy while some are beautifully paved. But listen, it doesn't matter which route you have traveled. Being yourself is all that matters and having a close relationship with your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He was our community hero and was awarded such by the Fountain Primary School in October 2022. He has, with us with many, he has left us with many memories and his legacy will live on through his children, grandchildren, and those whose lives he has touched. May his soul rest in peace and life perpetually shine on him. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, let's give them another hand. A distinct, the pillars of our community. How many of you know there's a lot you couldn't do without the JPs? How many of you know that? Couldn't do it without them, so thank you so much. We're gonna change our position just for a minute. Can everybody come stand? Stand, we're gonna change our position. I know it's hot. We're gonna break it up. Stand, please. Praise the worship, we're gonna lead us in a, in a song, a chorus right now. I see some tambourines. If you have your tambourine or whatever you have, we're gonna, we're gonna be joyous. Come on now, this is a celebration. Let's change it up a little bit. And let us sing to the glory and honor of God as we worship under this massive white tent this afternoon. Redemption coming, praise the Lord. What a wonderful freedom, glory to his name. Oh, I'm out of the bondage, I'm into the freedom by the blood of Jesus. Redemption coming, praise the Lord. What a wonderful freedom, glory to His name. I'm out of the bondage, I'm into the freedom by the blood of Jesus. Praise, so pause with our meat, so pause with our meat. Judgment day. Don't you hear the bells are ringing? Don't you hear the angels singing? It's a glory, hallelujah, to believe in a fire of sweet forever, just beyond the shining river. When we win those golden bells for you, and one more time, lift up on one and sing. Don't you hear the bells? Oh yes, don't to hear the angels. Oh, it's a glory, hallelujah, to believe. Oh, in a fire of sweet, just beyond, on the shining river, when we wing towards golden, you and me, all over the world, all over the world, all over the world. All over the world, oh, the preaching of the gospel soon be over. Soon be over the preaching of the gospel. Soon be over, all oh, oh. Don't you know that I'm moving up? Don't you know that I'm? Don't you know that I'm trusting in a man? In a man's trusting in. Don't you know that Satan is on my? Oh, and I never, never, oh, oh, I keep moving, moving up, moving up, oh, Christian people, don't you know that I'm moving up, don't you know that I'm, don't you know that I'm trusting in the man, in the amazing, trusting in, don't you know that Satan, oh, 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 
in me, in the mess, just in it. Don't you know that Satan? Oh, and I never, never. Oh, I keep moving up, moving up, moving up. Oh, church, you got to move. You got to move. You better move. You better move. When God gets ready, you got to move. You may be rich. You may be poor. You may be black. You may be white. When God gets ready, you got to move. You better move, you got to move, you got to move, you got to move, when God gets ready, you got to move, you may be rich, you may be poor, you may be black, you may be white, when God gets ready, you got to move, you better move, you got to move, you got to move, you got to move, oh, when God you got to move. You may be rich. You may be poor. You may be black. You may be white. When God gets ready, you got to move. Amen. Hallelujah. To the Father. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen. What a day when we get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be. I know I'm looking forward to it. I want to see my mother again. Amen. I want to see my mom. I am going to be looking down and say, I wish I was there with you worshiping right now. So one sweet day, one sweet day. So I want to welcome right now all the Myers to the platform and then I'm going to ask the church teachers college to get ready quite quickly to be following on from Mr. Myers. Thank you very much, moderator. <laughs> Executive members, come forward, please. <laughs> Come show them. About the Nablin. I don't rush this thing, but it's an hour show. Mm -hmm. All our show. So just, 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 just easy. No rush thing. Because I know where we're coming from in this thing together. All right, uh, good afternoon, church. Good afternoon, church. Thank you. Today is a sad day in our life. It's a farewell to an icon. Madam Moderator, I'll ask you for permission. Can you do my discipline here? Just give Mr. Mr. Phillips two minutes for me. He can say something, and then I'll finish. Because I'm going to share this thing together. Thank you very much. MP Phillips, please, from Northwest Manchester. Good morning, church. Good morning. Well, today is truly a day of celebration. It is. I see former member of parliament, Kern Spencer. I see Councillor Fisher. I see aspirant. Zalika Jess, my brothers and sisters in Christ. You know, normally funerals should be a sad place. But today when I drove up and I saw the turnout of 
persons from all walks of life, from all over the island. This is truly a day of celebration for a life of someone who has lived his life in a straight path, who has given himself not only to his community, not only to sports, not only to politics, but to the building of a nation. And many a times, we don't give credit to them when they're alive. Sure. We don't. <laughs> because them say a man who live in a house and it's a broke down. He don't realize it's a broke down unless somebody outside tell him. But you are here because you have seen his contribution. You know? He's one of them that I admire in the politics. And I want to bring condolences not only from my own family, but from the leader of the People's National Party, right. from the chairman of Region 5, Kern Spencer, and my own executive of Northwest Manchester. Because it is on his shoulders that many of us have stood on. When I see former Olympians here, future Olympians, they're not here because of the name, Elder Smith. It is because of his contribution to their own life and their own accomplishments. And a proud member of the People's National Party. Yes. Because individuals like Elder Alexander Smith paved the way for a better Northeast St. Elizabeth, a better parish a better People's National Party and a better country. And it is in that vein for his memory to live on. And I saw Principal Wellington up here earlier. I want to, on behalf of myself, my family, the constituency of Northwest Manchester and the People's National Party to offer a scholarship for a student attending Stets, which is not in Northwest Manchester, going to GC Foster College to study sports. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm not doing it just because. As most, most people might think, say politicians just talk and no promise and no deliver. <laughs> but my day in politics will come and go too. <laughs> as his time on earth has come and gone. It is what we remember of him and his contribution to his country, his community, and his party. And to the school itself. Because this won't be the first or the last scholarship that I would offer to someone who is befitting of. But I think Elder Smith is befitting of this scholarship for that one student. And we won't do it one time. But as soon as that student completes, then we will start another. So. <laughs> Sandra. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, <laughs> his time on earth has come and passed. He, every one of us have been here, have been given a purpose on why it is that we are on this land. He has lived this purpose. What is your purpose? Is what you need to ask yourself that question. May his soul rest in peace, and his family should feel proud that he has lived the life that he did. And may all of us here continue to emulate him, and for his memory to continue to live on. May his soul rest in peace. Yes, sir. Thank you, oh, yes. VP and MP. You know, in my political journey, he was my vanguard, my icon, my advisor, 
my supervisor. And today, as I stand to say farewell to an icon, a great, great comrade, a great father, a great grandfather, and the list goes on. But I will remember, ladies and gentlemen, in my first election, when he gave me the list and tell me how much I want to win by. It was him and Jagger. And I said, how oh, you know? He said, all right, watch the result. So said, so done. LD, when I came to Hargreaves and look at you in room 22, and I want to say to the family, and all of us, we have lost a great human being. Those two little boys shoulder, when I went to the, to the hospital bed from Stets, one was at the knee and was at the bedside, and doctor, my doctor was there. And those two little boys, they were at Stets. And I said, well, little, I'm going to call up my user to pay special attention to those two boys. When I went there, they said to me, sir, I don't know you. Can we crush some Irish potato and some pumpkin and give him to eat? And I said to them, no, it can't work like that. What is in his hand is what's feeding him. The two little boys started to cry. I came outside, went into the hallway, and I said, doctor, let us pray, because this is no good. And I will never forget at room seven when I went to look for Dana also, his late wife. Similar situation. But Michael, I want to salute you for the scholarship for Eldie. And that's why you see, Shola, you are so dear to me. Cuban takes the entire family. But Shola, you're a general. And I want to say to the Rasta man himself, the Rasta man. And I say to Seki, I see you mourning, but I'm here for you as I always do. To the division, to all the comrades and labor rights and non political persons, Elder Maya Simit have touched every one of us life in his time. Every one of us life. Every one of us life. And we have lost a great JP. We have lost yes. a great human being, a great comrade, a great community person. Yes. But let us remember one thing. When all in this on earth is done, Jesus Christ has a final say. Amen. So farewell, my friend. And Cuba, I want to call for you today. You have to start taking the elements to the role as I speak today. I want to make it absolutely clear, abundant and clear. Because this family, and ladies and gentlemen, moderator, I finish. I finish. I remember there was a meeting at Pass, Brother Pass, Chap at Crossroad. And Brother Pass, you know, great comrade also. And the great Charlie Rowe was upset about something, him and Eldemeyer. It was Roger, on the Roger election. And they said they not coming to a meeting. But lo and behold, when the music starts and the first speaker speak, it was Charlie Rowe and Eldemeyer Smith bursting the crowd, yeah. bursting the crowd, coming to the meeting. <laughs> and Charlie Rowe made so rest in peace, and Eldemeyer made so rest in peace. Charlie said to us, when soldiers are called, when they have food or money, soldiers must respond to the cause. And I will never forget those words. So farewell, Aunt Master Charlie. Farewell, Brother Pass, and to the icon. May his soul rest in peace and life perpetual shine upon you. Ellie, I will never let you down. I want to stop now, I don't want to start to cry again. Farewell, my friend. Farewell, my comrade. Don't worry about my natural man. I'm a true person. This is the other. So just go and relax. You just, you just try to upset everything. But, ladies and gentlemen, let us say 
farewell in one voice to Ellie, all of us together. Farewell, 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 Ellie Maya Smith. We'll sing one verse of all my comrades. Come, Travis, come lead it. Because he want, he will never forget me for leading this. So, Travis, lead it. Alright, we'll sing, oh my comrades, see the signal. Waving in the sky, reinforcement now appearing, victory is nigh. Whether you are a comrade or you're not a comrade, we are one Jamaica, not true. So please tell us we sing this song. Oh my comrades, see the signal waving in the sky. Oh my comrades, see the signal waving in the sky. Reinforcement no. Around us falling, T ones are run. Oh, courage of must let us hold the fort. Hold the fort, for I am coming. Jesus signals, Jesus, write the answer, read the answer back to heaven by the praise. We let us hold the fort. Answer, ready and step back to heaven by the grace we've won. Farewell and thank you, moderator. Thank you very much for your cooperation. <laughs> Come on, thank you, thank you. Come on, let's just raise our hands. Yes, amen. That, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Now we're going to, uh oh, she's ready. She's ready and waiting. Church Teachers College. Thank you. Officiating ministers, members of the educational community, members of the political directorate, bereaved family members, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, good afternoon. Death is just another step along life's changing ways. It is more than just a gateway to a new and better way. And parting from our loved ones is much easier to bear when we know that they are waiting for us to join them there. For it is on the wings of death that a living soul takes flight into the promised land of God, where there shall be no night. On behalf of the batch 10 members of Church Teachers College and my family, I offer sincere condolences to the family of late batchmate Elder Meyer Simit. I want you to know that our powerful prayers are with you during this period of great loss and grief. In August of 1984, about 135 young, intelligent, right. smart, yes. sm um, invincible persons began to write in the history book of Church Teachers College. 
Among them was a young lad, 20 years old, from Thornton, named Eldemaya Smith. He was noticeable from day one. He, the contribution he made to his peers, batchmate, colleagues, are among the most treasured memories in our lives. He was warm, and his hugs were comforting to our batchmate. And many of us, he was our livid teddy bear. He, his voice, his signature voice will always be with us. And when he spoke, see the members trembled. We loved him. He loved us. At Church Teachers College, Elder Meyer specialized in mathematics. And, and since his death, many batchmen convinced that Edmire was the person allowed them to pass college batch. One batchmen finally remember that when the tutor could not do the maths in trigonometry. He called Eldemeyer to explain to the class. And in his own dramatic way, he, he showed us the way to do the, to, to the maths problem. Eldemeyer. Eldemeyer was indeed a very good maths teacher. Very good. If you did not learn maths in Eldemeyer class, something was wrong with your brain. <laughs> yes. 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 He was a maths teacher, indeed and we remember him for his faith to Mamja. He will show us the concept and the procedure of the maths problem. He was really a good, good maths teacher. During his sojourn meant at Church Teachers College, he made invaluable so, um, to, to, he, he, he was the person who in the cricket was was outstanding. But Can I just ask everyone, just for your patience, just for your patience, please. But bowling, and he, and many. Can I just know, please, just wait, wait. Okay, okay. Can you help me? 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 Can that he was the one that captain captain captain, captain. Yeah. captain.
captain. And, and, and three occasion, he batting, batting skill Safe. saved the college from impending defeat. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. His, His powerless. powerlessness of cricket saved church teachers college on many occasions. Ladies and gentlemen, over 40 years ago, Eldie Meyer, Eldie Meyer discovered, discovered his, purpose. his purpose, that is to be a teacher, an educator, an instructor, trainer, mentor, and coach, and a school papa. During his professional journey, he unlocked the minds of many. of many students, changing them from ordinary Jamaican citizen into extraordinary global ambassadors. He lived a full and productive life, and the but the master called him home on February in level this year. But as we reflect upon his life, work, and work, let us, members, let us remember that death cannot cripple love. Death cannot erode fate. Death cannot kill friendship. Death cannot shut out Memory. memories. Death cannot silence courage. Death cannot lesser the power of the resurrection. What good, Elder Meyer. My batchmate. And my batchmate and I when I encourage you then that when you reach the pearly, the pearly gate do of heaven, do not, do not bowl a bouncer to St. To, to Peter. <laughs> but look for Pythagoras and give him a maths problem to solve. God bless you all. God bless you all. Back. Come on, let's give her a standing ovation. Come on, come on. Come on. You got to go to Come on, keep keep clapping. She was determined to determined to finish her tribute. Come on, let's just encourage her. 1974, that is, a no, that is a lot of years. And let's just encourage her. Let's encourage her strength right now. Yes? Come on. Husband. Another round of applause for her as she takes her seat. Paul Adams is, is, is ready, and I'm going to ask Tassie Anna Smith to get ready, and Paul, I'm going to ask you to just be quick with your, your tribute. Paul Adams, who's a friend, if you're here. Paul Adams, come in. Okay, Mr. Adams. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. To speak in terms of minutes is to belittle the value of time to the life of Elder Mayor Smith. To speak in units of days is to come close to the quality man he is. 
to speak in units of years. Yes, you are just getting there. That's right. Yes. Elder Meyer Smith is a friend of mine. As a matter of fact, we just spoke a while ago down by the entry gate. And as usual, he reminded me that after I speak, I must remember that we have another church service in Balaclava to attend. Elder Smith is a quality life, is a value life, is an individual who is attached to persons because of his love for them. I met him in 1980 and then again in 1986 and we traveled the road in 2002. I remember the year in campaigning for the president of the JTA. And we were in St. Anne, Discovery Bay, the Queen's Highway, the Camry, the Black Camry. Eldie Meyer is driving. I said, Eldie, I'm not manning this speed in the bus. I am not manning the speed. He said, well, partner, you don't pay me a tino, so if you don't pay me, me a bucky. <laughs> I deliberately refused from paying him after agreeing from, for him not to do so in order for him not to book it. Eddie Meyer had something about him and I wanted to work with me. He has this unrestrained, untapped energy. He would work from morning to evening, day to day, night to night, day to day, night to night, in order to get his work done. And wh whether he's in politics, in track and field, mathematics, socialization, whatever that is, that is just elderly. He loved Donna, his wife. He loved his children. He loved his church. He loved his friends. But there's something else about Eldie that you need to know too. Did you know that Eldie was afraid? <laughs> Eldie was a scared human being. Yes, and he was afraid. Afraid to lose. <laughs> he, he does not want to lose. He does not know what it is to lose. He doesn't want to come near losing. And therefore, he's putting all the work. The next thing I want to tell you about Eldie that you may not know Eldie never drank. <laughs> he never drank. If, if, you, if you pass on certain occasions, you may get that impression. And that impression is not for you, for, it's difficult for you to get. He never drank. So you'll be there with him at a funeral, at a wedding, at a party meeting, and he'll be there and he never drank. He swallowed. <laughs> And then he's a partner, and also don't know more you. The next thing about Elder Smith, don't tell him that you can't. If you tell him that you can't, he loses it. So all the persons who he would have trained in different areas of life, don't tell him that he can't, and don't tell him that you can't. Elder Smith will be remembered beyond the boundary. 
He'll be remembered beyond being a friend, beyond being a social interactive person, beyond being a person attached to life, beyond being a person with a strong belief system, beyond being a person who loves people, beyond being a person who loves to give. He gives everything. He works, gets money, and gives. He spends everything on people. If you think I am lying, ask Shaper. Because he has spent a lot on Shaper. <laughs> One night, we went down to, and, and I must tell you, something is tagging at my jacket tail. <laughs> One night, we went to a, 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 a setup in Westmoreland. On our way back about 2 o'clock in the morning, everybody wants to sleep. So, Ellie parked the car in the quarters and had all of us running round and round the car. <laughs> round and round the car. 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 There was no car. <laughs> Ellie may I drive up the car gone way down. No, the bottom, we have to run it down. <laughs> I am cautioning you. I am imploring you. Don't remember the contents of the casket. That will go down and that will not come back up. Come on. Come Remember on. Yes. the come on. quality of the man. Yes, sir. Yes. Come on. Remember yes, sir. the life of the man. Yes, Remember the spirit of the man. Yes. Remember the love of the man. Yes. I charge you, I implore you, I cajole you, be like Elder Meyer Smith. Yes. <laughs> come on, let's give him a round of applause. that note and before Will Mark Ricketts come with a selection, I want us all to stand and those who are not standing, those who to stand and we're going to give a cheer and a round of applause for the legend. Come on everybody, we're going to cheer him, we're going to remember him and I don't know what you call him, but I want to get a cheer, I want to get a clap for Elder Maya Smith right now. We're just clapping, let's cheer Remember the legend that he was. Everybody should be on their feet right now. Remembering him, remembering who he is, what he stood for, his legacy, everything that he has done in his life. Remember, you are born and then you die. But it's the in-between that matters and how you make it count. And Elder Maya Smith made that dash from to count. Let's give him a round of applause right now. As I invite Will Mark Ricketts to come with a selection right now. Keep standing, keep standing, keep standing. Sorry about that, sorry about that. It's, you, when, when you sit, you feel the heat, you know. But when you stand up, you're not gonna feel the heat. Look here, I'm gonna give everybody the, um, the opportunity to do something. Some of you might say, okay, we come on, Mr. Smith funeral, we never get to do anything. Everybody's gonna participate in this, so I'm inviting you. Stand with me, stand with me, please. Stand with me, please, please. Hallelujah! Shout hallelujah, somebody! Hallelujah. I, as, I, as I look around, I see shoulder, Shana and, and the granddaughters, everybody in white, and it looks so fitting. I love that. I love white. Purity, happiness. Come on, somebody. So I'm not gonna sing a slow song. I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep it going. You're sounding well done, dear, you know. You're sounding so good. It's so like a convention. So we're gonna sing this song together. As I travel through this pilgrim land, there is a friend who walks with me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I travel to this pilgrim land. There is a friend who walks, who walks with me. 
somebody said, lead me safely to the sinking sand. It is a cause of Calvary. Somebody said, this, this could be my pride, dear Lord. I can't hear you. Yeah, keep me safe. Dream land, it is a call of Calvary. This should be, this would be my pride, Lord. Each day to thy best I can. For I need a light, I need a Jesus, oh my hand. Come on, everybody. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, oh my hand. I need thee every oh, to this, this, oh, thy, thy saving. Everybody, when we all, when we all, when we all get to it. God is good. All the time. All the time. It is so beautiful that at a time like this, we can find the strength, the courage to be happy and to give thanks as we see our final goodbye to Eldie from this life. Ever since I learned that the funeral service was going to be held here, I've been wondering 
Is this sheer coincidence? Is it destiny? Or is it part of God's plan for the life of Elamah? We cross paths right out in the middle here. As a youngster, my dad was the captain of Aberdeen cricket team. So I followed cricket even before I could play. Most communities around here were represented by a cricket team. We played organized competitions and of course several Corrigwood matches. Thornton had one of the better teams with veterans like Sword and Kena, Sheppy, along with Dixie, Pato. There was a young man. He was at the center of everything. He batted, he bowled, he even wicked keep sometimes. And I only knew his name because I was a scorer. Everybody knew him as Cabra. And he played like a Cabra. Fast forward to the 1970s, Aberdeen All Age School. We returned from summer holidays to find that we will be having three young male teachers. Quite significant. Maybe it still is, but at that point, most of our teachers in primary and all in school were women. And when I recognized that, I said, oh my God, Cabra is in my life again. Is this a nightmare or is it a vision? Well, quickly, it turned into a vision because he took over the sports in general in the school, along with the help of the other two young male teachers, Barry, otherwise Collington Ferguson, and Clement Weatherburn. On Elder's mind, our training took place on the road from the middle of Rocky Hill up the hill to the old schoolyard, sometimes up the gravel road to the Ockbrook Church, two or three times around the church, finishing up by the cottage. When many of us wilted under the pressure, he would often say, Donald Quarry don't win races because of his abilities. He win races because he work harder than the rest. And I will tell you, we quickly learned that it was better for us to fall in line and do as we are told, because if he get to the point where he is talking, but you cannot hear clearly what he is saying, he is mad. And if you don't comply, it is only going to get worse. He would often tell us, if you train under these conditions, when you go on the track, they can't manage you. We believed it. We, we did as we were told. And within a year or two, Aberdeen Olive School was literally invincible in track and field competition and cricket in our region. Because of his input in our lives, I don't know how many of my teammates are here. I will have to mention Sterling Dixon, Constantine Loban, Alison Salmon, Marva Parchment, among those others who have not been named, I say thank you. 
to members of my cricket team, I was the captain. And I tell you a short, quick story, just to show you the measure of man he was. We went to El Dursley, 1972, 73. And by then, all the schools have heard about us. So one of their best players had already passed common entrance and was at sets. And they named him in the team. We said, Mr. Simmel, let him play because they can't beat us. He said, this is principal, he's not playing. It was on a morning when the community turned out to clean up the cricket field. I've seen some, I've never seen my shirt look so sharp. And they all came down. He said, boys, get in the van. Nobody more because we think we want to be there with our teacher. And he turned to me and he pointed and he said something. I wasn't quite sure, but I said to the guys, let us get in. And we, get, we got in the van and one of the persons out there, I don't know how many of you recognize he had a scar under his left eye. They hit him with a machete and burst under his eyes. I share this with you to say, when he's in charge, whether it is sports or whatever, he is not just there as the chaperone. He's there and he will make sure that every last one of us are safe. So whenever we go anywhere with him, we were confident that all we got to do is just fall in line and do as he tells us. By now, we became good friends. Through cricket, through track and field, we became good friends. I noticed that some of, some of the evenings, he lived in Borwood, but by the time we left school and on our way home, he would be getting to Aberdeen with us. And quickly, I figured out that he was not just coming to Aberdeen because of us. He was chasing love. Which happened to end up in my house. So we were crossing path again. I felt safe in his class until one day he called me to the board to explain Pythagoras theory with illustration. I thought I did well, he didn't. And what happened after that I have never forgotten Pythagoras' theory. <laughs> the square described on the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the square on the other two sides. <laughs> if you wake me in the middle of the night, I can tell you and I can do it. Did somebody ask what about the flogging if he did that? That too, I didn't forget that. So for all of us who's Mind he have untangled and unraveled, we didn't like maths, but came to love math because he was our teacher. I say thank you. And on behalf of the many lives that he has touched, we have heard so much. I say rest in peace, my brother. Thank you. Thank you so much, so much. Come on, let's keep that applause going. Thank you, Clive, thank you. We have sign language. Oh, something different. Yes, I'm going to invite Tassie and Smith and company, not on our own, to come. 
Yeah, my granddaughter. All the granddaughters who's going to come and support Tassie. And let's give her a round of applause. There's gifts and talents in the Smith family. Come on, let's do better than that. This is sign language. Come on, let's give them a round of applause as they get ready to come.
everyone. Let's give them a round of applause. They're jealous of the angels around the throne. Come on, another round of applause for them. That can't have been easy to stand there to celebrate their grandfather. We're coming down and I just want to invite Major Keneal Smith to come and give his tribute, followed by Janelle Smith Wallace, another granddaughter. Let's give Ken Major Keneal a round of applause. <laughs> Officiating Minister, other ministers in the audience, uh, members of the clergy, other ministers of religion on the platform, uh, members of government, immediate family, members of the track and field community, members of the cricket community, members of the lay magistrate community, St. Elizabeth, members of states past and present, members of the political community, Friends, well-wishers, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I am hot, and I know you're hot as well, but that's okay. Here we stand, we can do no other. And those are the words of Marcus Garvey. We have come to celebrate the life of our dearly beloved Eldemaya Alexander Smith, <laughs> AKA Cobra, Lennis, Uncle Smith, Coach, my name is Kanil Smith, as mentioned earlier, his nephew. And I am a proud member of the family to give tribute on behalf of the remaining family and also, uh, of course, to his immediate family. I'm sure that something was left out at the start of the program, that for all those persons coming to give tribute must give a mathematical concept. And of course, I'll share with everybody else, well, everybody, um, a Pythagoras theorem, of course. <laughs> Pythagoras seemed to be everybody's friend, and I'm sure the friend of our dearly beloved, beloved. The square of the longest side is equal to the sum of the square of the other two side. And that code unlocks my presentation um, here today. Cobra is a community man, and whilst I'm here to give um, tribute on behalf of the Simmons family, um, I am here to stand in resolute to the extended family and all those many persons who became family um, by those virtue of his humanitarian approach to life. Cobra was a man of wisdom, rational in his thinking, critical in his thought, yet stubborn. LD was the leader of our family. And I'm sure all our family members who are standing and sitting here can attest to that. If it were things that needed to be done, he, will, he would have been representing the family. He was the man in charge, whether it has to do with death, family reunion, get together, whatever it was, he led the charge and he did so expertly. Uncle Lenny's house was everybody's house. There was always an open door policy for everyone. Sometimes we wonder, I wonder, where so many people fit. He was always helping someone um, and he believed in children. I remember when I was attending the Carter College, the lady who spoke not too long ago representing Church Teachers College is my second mother. And I remember when I was attending the Carter and uh, tough times got the better of me and my family. And I started to live at school. And uh, Sharon Anderson, uh, because she found out that I was the nephew of Eldemeyer Smith, took me into her home as her child. And I want to, and I want to say to you that that to date has been one of the most defining moments for me. So even as a direct family, I am not speaking as an outsider now, I have felt the impact of his love and just the impact of things that he tried to appreciate. Uncle Lenny's had a special language, and for those of you who know him, sometimes we considered which version of the Creole he spoke. You sometimes had to exercise discernment to interpret what he was trying to say. 
You could have just imagined when they got upset. He reminded us, the family, of a combination of personality of both his parents, his mother, Sylvita, Silene Davis Smith, and his father, Esau Joseph Smith, affectionately known as Joseph Smith. Esau, just a, just a side joke, Esau, um, our grandfather said, you don't want to name nobody to call him Esau because Esau killed who? <laughs> so he, he, was a, he was a twin, so he changed his name. So you can understand the stock um, that Eldemeyer came from. I understand that time is going and we are convinced that the family's passion for mathematics derived from his warlike approach that instituted instrumentally the concepts of mathematics in his everyday doing. Of course, many of us, and I too, followed in his footsteps in his path and became an educator of mathematics. And whilst attending the University of the West Indies studying mathematics, I got upset with my uncle at one point because I thought it was a setup. Because I'm sure that everybody in the university know that mathematics was the most difficult program and subject in the university. But I was sure it was on a no-fail mission because I could not face my uncle and return to the remainder of the family. And those who know him and know that we are associated um, to come back and it was not successful in that mission. And today I'm very thankful because everything I now do has something to do with the, uh, the deep thought and, and, and critical thinking that mathematics um, contribute to your daily life. Our dearly beloved is one of our family's hero, and we have always been proud. But I can tell you that we are even now prouder, having sat and listened to the many tributes today and the other two that went on, to hear the many expressions of gratitude and the many contributions that he made to nation building. When you all hear everything coming together, it, 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 it gives a different impact. And so I want to say to you that, well, I honestly did not know that, and could not have fathomed rather, that his, the, the full success of his work. Um, but I want to say, when, you, when I stand here and I look in the audience and see the many accomplished persons, the Olympians, the cricketers, the international cricketers, the um, persons who have gone on to do great things, the lives that he um, impacted, I am proud. And I want to say to you that not only I am proud, but the family is proud. And the family thanks everybody who took the time out to be here and took the time out to give tribute. Um, we say thank you. And I want to leave with you um, something that he taught me um, you know, growing up. He said to me at one point that it is not what you do that is, imp it is, not what you do that is important, is what you get done. So don't watch the noise in the market. A lot of people look busy, and busy looking like they're doing a lot of things, but they're not getting a lot done. And so uh, for the foundation that he has built on his shoulders, we now stand. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I am so glad I grew up in the United Kingdom, as I might have been taught maths <laughs> and taught the kind of maths that Major and my cousin Clive talked about. So I look like I escaped <laughs> the teacher, Elder Maya Smith. Thank you so much. And so our final sort of tribute on behalf of the family, Janelle, are you ready to come? Are you coming by yourself, Janelle? All right. Good afternoon. Okay, some of you may know him as Mr. Smith. Some may refer to him as a father or grandfather, a coach, teacher, or some may acknowledge him as their friend. But for me, he was my best friend. In his words, not mine. I called him GD and he called me fire. You know, it's funny that it's me stood here today because that's exactly what he would have wanted. And I never knew that until December. To be honest, I think it's the accent. But you see, me and my granddad had very strong personalities. 
We did go head to head and I never understood our clash until recently. It was my sister's birthday. And you know how girls take long to get ready? Especially the birthday girl. So we're fixing eyelashes, finding the heels, running up and down for lip gloss. But the problem was we told him he was gonna be there by seven, right? 8, 8 p.m. passes and it's time to make sure that like, the hair looks good, the makeup looks good in all angles. By all means, 8.30 approaches and my granddad storms in. What are you doing, man? Come, come! That's all I could hear. The whole house is shouting. Everyone's screaming for us to come down. You know, he, you'd think he's mad at my sister, but no, he was taking all that anger out on me. As I said, we have two very strong personalities. So I turned around and I said, no one actually means seven when they say seven. You show up for nine. That's all I said. And he screamed at me. He said, don't tell me that. That's... And then boom, our big brawl. I'm personally quite stubborn, so I announced to the whole house I'm not speaking to my grandfather. And then by the next day at 9 a.m., he knocks on my door and says, Jens, Come, let's go training, are you coming with me? So I took that as his subtle way of saying I'm sorry, because you know, Jamaicans don't say sorry. <laughs> so December, me and my grandfather spent every day with each other. If I'm being brutally honest, we still went head to head on a few days, but it was worth it as it made our relationship stronger. We spent days getting patties, eating pineapples, training. I was his companion. We spoke about the real meanings behind life, the opportunities life can give you, and the true definitions of happiness. I can assure you my grandfather was at peace. He was content, and his only message to us was, and I quote, he said, do not sit in sadness when I'm gone. I took that line and I've been reflecting on it ever since he passed. It helps me sleep to know he's at rest. My granddad believed in me. He spent his last days in a healthy physical form whilst I was by his side until he got sick. He was very proud to call me his granddaughter. Moreover, he was a very proud man. He believed in selfless acts. He gave without looking for a return. He grew most of us up until the very moment he grew his wings. He was the guidance in our family, wise. He always knew how to give a helping hand. So today you cry because he died, but remember to smile because he lived. My grandfather will always be my best friend, a legend and a soldier, because no matter what life was throwing at him, he battled it and carried more soldiers with him through it. He made it through and he left his legacy here today. Thank you. Come on, come on, come on. Let's give Janine a big hand. How many granddaughters can stand and say that their grandfather is their best friend? Come on. Let's give her a round of applause. Thank you, Janelle. Thank you. Now we come to a part of the program. I'm going to ask those who are designated to collect our offertory, our offering to come and make your way to the front. You all should know who you are to come right now ready to collect the offering. This is an important part. You know why? The proceeds are going to the foundation for Do Donald, which is Donna and Elder Meyer, a foundation set up in their name. Shola, I just wonder if you just want to say a few words what the foundation know. Anybody, you just want to say, well, the foundation is set up in their name to remember them a particular time of the year. Different things, different programs will be put on to, rec to recognize them in the community. So we're really asking everybody to dig deep in your pockets. Can I say that again? Dig deep and give towards this foundation so that will be poured back into the community so that the community can benefit from the legacy of Donna and Elder Meyer. Is that okay with everybody? Yes? Good, thank you. There is a hymn, Mine Eyes Have Seen the Glory, an offertory hymn. I'm going to ask the praise and worship, um, the singers to come as we sing this song together. It's in your program. The words are there. My eyes have seen the glory. Thank you. 
Man hasn't seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling all the vengeance where the grapes of wrath are stored. He had loosed the faithful light of Sounded for the trumpet, that shall never call it tree. He is shifting not the host of all before he just been seen. Just pray for God's blessing on the offering. Amen. Amen. 
Let us pray. The eternal God, you are our refuge and beneath are your everlasting arms. And Father, we are grateful this afternoon for the life of your servant, for the life of an icon who have impacted so many persons, so many communities, so many institutions and organizations. And Father, the offering that has been lifted in honor of him, I pray that you will bless it. I pray, God, that it will be used in memory, that it will be used as a memorial of this icon who have touched so many lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated, everybody. Good afternoon to you all. It is a privilege for me this afternoon to share in this celebration. Indeed, it is a celebration. Let me observe all the protocols here for the interest of time. I want to extend to the Smith family sincere condolences in this time of grief. I'm not here to tell you not to cry, but I'm here to tell you not to cry as those without hope, knowing that Mr. Smith has blazed the trail and he has left an indelible mark on this community, on this country. I want to especially extend this condolences to Shola, his daughter, of whom I am acquainted with. I met Mr. Smith, I think, about twice through his wife, Auntie Donna, who was a prominent member of the New Testament Assembly in Aberdeen where she served as a minister there and secretary in other, in other capacity. So I'm not so familiar with Mr. Smith. I'm more familiar with the wife, Mrs. Smith. However, the sermon is not geared to Mr. Smith, it's for those who are alive. And there's a particular text I want to share with you from Paul's letter to his son Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 to 8. I read from the New International Version. For I am ready, being poured out like a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to those who long for his appearing. This is the word of the Lord. One man, it is said, he visited an old cemetery. And as he walked on the graves, he saw inscriptions like loving father, beloved mother, darling son, rest in peace, asleep in Jesus, and so on. Eventually, he came to the grave of the man who had owned the plantation for many years in a particular community. Under his name, there was the date of his birth and the date of his death. Then there was a five-word statement that summed up his life, and it read, a man of unquestionable integrity. Just five words, nothing more, nothing less. My brothers and sisters, the question that I am led to ask us, what will be said about us when we too should have departed this world? How would you want to be remembered? In this particular text, 
we hear Paul answer to that question. When Paul wrote to his son Timothy, he was writing from a Roman jail with the certain knowledge that he too, Paul, would soon be dead. He looked back at his journey with Christ and the church and then he looked forward to what would happen after he died. Then he wrote his own epitaph when he called his son Timothy to his bedside. He said, Timothy, I want you to understand that the time of my departure is at hand. I want you to tell the church, don't cry over me as one who has lost the race. But I want them to understand that my departure is at hand. I am now being ready to be poured out like a drink offering. And let them know that I have fought a good fight. I have finished my race. But most of all, I have kept the faith. And my brothers and sisters, Paul says, tell them I am just going ahead of them to receive my crown, the crown of righteousness. The life in which we live can be lightened to that of a race. And I'm happy I chose this text, not even knowing the background to end his life, that he was one of the greatest coaches in this country. Finishing, my brothers and sisters, a race doesn't happen by accident. As Paul approached his death, he drew some conclusion about his own life and what would happen next. And based on his words, I would like to think about these words that Paul says, the time of my departure is at hand. It refers the word departure. It refers to a shift the anchor, raising his seal, leaving the harbor, and setting sail for a distant port. It also refers to an army that has made camp near a battlefield. To and I listened to the tributes, especially that of the granddaughter. It reflected that when I die, and this says, we do not want, I do not want you to be sorrowful because he knew that his time of departing this world is at hand. But what made him more confident was that he had finished his race. He has run well. And my brothers and sisters, Solomon reminded us that the race in which we run is not for the swift. The battle is not for the strong, but to him that endures to the end. The beginning of a race is not the most important part of the race. The middle of the race is not the most important part of the race. The best part of the race or the most important part of the race is finishing well. Finishing well. So his departure came to an end and Paul left a legacy behind. He said, I have fought a good fight. What does this say? That Paul lived a disciplined life. Becoming an athlete is not just about running, sprinting. It's about discipline. Discipline. I have fought the good fight. And my brothers, if you go through the life of Paul, you would have seen Paul came up on many obstacles. He came up on many things in life. His own men turned against him. They flogged him. There were times when he was hungry. He was shipwrecked. But Paul says, I will continue to run. Yes. Yes. Call life because one day I will leave a legacy behind that I have fought a good fight. Not only, of course, finish your race well as LD. The story was told 
of an Olympic game where many countries were gathered to run. I can't recall the country at this time, but there was a young man who flew miles, hours, to be at that particular Olympic game. And he came to represent his country he was running he got injured on the track and so his father got so concerned about him his father went out there and he implored him and said son come you are hurting there is pain pain in your eyes and the son said no daddy Track, and he started to hop because he went there to do something and his father said oh no get the stretcher and get him off the on the track and when his father gave his final imploring to come the boy looked in his father's eyes and said daddy I did not come for so far to represent my country to start a race and to stop in the middle of the race I came from so far to represent my country in finishing the race even if I finish I'm broken pieces Paul says my reward is sure for those who finish their race well there is a crown of righteousness that Paul says will be given to every man by the righteous judge and not only to us, but to everyone that love his appearing. As I close, I say to us, continue the race. Oh, yes. Continue the race. Finish strong. Yes. Finish well. Don't start the race and don't finish it. Because there is a reward for you. If I carry the gospel to the world great and far I won't stand empty handed on God judgment bar but I dare not relax until I've done all I ask Lest I should leave behind an unfinished task. You have run the race. You have kept, kept the faith. These words I long to hear my Savior say. And when my life on earth is done, there's just one thing, Lord, I ask. Don't let me leave behind and all finish task. If I've wronged, wronged a brother, if I've wounded a friend, give me strength, precious Lord, oh, to go and make amend. And when I come to change my worlds and reach heaven at last, then I won't leave. run the race you have kept the faith these words I long to hear my Savior say and when my 
my life on earth is done there's just one thing Lord I ask don't let me leave behind an unfeeling when I come to the crossing I'll be leaving behind possession oh and this I won't mind it would make my heart glad behind an unfinished task oh yet the faith these words I long to hear my Savior one thing Lord I ask Don't an unfinished task finish your race well God bless you come on let's get a, a bigger praise for Pastor Phillips. Come on. Amen. Amen. He has encouraged us to finish this race. I've often said it's not how you die that matters, you know. It's how you live. It's how you live. What will people say about you when you die? That they don't have to come and make it up. Thanks be to God, they didn't have to make it up about LD. He was distinguished and the words, we could describe him. In fact, we could run out of words to describe him. But those of us who are left, how would someone describe you and the life that you live? And I love the challenge that Pastor Phillips has left us. The race, the race that we're in is how you finish. God bless you, man of God, and I hope you take something away from today and from this service. Last night at the tribute, the challenge was, what's the legacy? What's the legacy of Mr. Smith as he has poured into your life? What has his life meant in vain as he's poured into your life? Amen? Amen. And so at this time, I'm going to ask his children, the legacy, his children, who are going to come to give the eulogy. And I want you all to stand as you receive his children. Andre in Nevada, Geneva, Kino, and Shola. This is the legacy of Mr. Smith and Donna. Stand right now. Stand with me as his children. children a round of applause these are amazing children how many of you know that amazing children all of them where is andre andre andy we want andy. elder meyer andy come i can see him come on let's just keep <laughs> all right the, the children are here and we want to recognize them let's give them another round of applause again Good afternoon, everyone. You may be seated. Major of a man. Someone once said, every man dies before every man lives. Today we come together to celebrate and pay tribute to an ardent and jovial man who truly did live. 
while simultaneously loving and caring for others around him. I am sure if I had asked dad if I should relate this zoology to maths, cricket, or track and field, he would find it difficult to decide. But today, the decision is ours, and I will relate to it to track and field. His first lap. Sylvita and Joseph Smith started off the first leg, creating a wonderful partnership in the district of Thornton, St. Elizabeth, and on May 11, 1950, Meyer Alexander Smith. LD started his first leg and was enrolled at Thornton Basic School and went on to enroll at Thornton Primary, where he later went on to Fairview Baptist High School, then St. George's Extension High. After completing his years of high school, he moved back home, then his journey began. Second lap. His second lap was different now. He started to have a family. Over the years, he met Donna. She became his wife, mother. Together, they had six children. They welcomed their first, Andre, on December 9th. Then two years later, he welcomed his second, Shane, on October 16th. He later welcomed his third, Nevada, on November 3rd. I think, I think I can say his heart <laughs> I think I can say his heart lit up with, a bundle, with his bundle of joy, which came two years later when his mate gave birth to their first daughter, Geneva, on March 20. On April 17, a mere four years later, he witnessed the birth of his fourth son, yours truly. It took him five years to conceive his second daughter, which would make his sixth child, and on June 12th, he welcomed Shola. Who would have thought they would have? But on August 3rd, 1991, he made Donna, mother, deceased, his wife. Even after having six children, you would have thought that it would be enough. But he, just as his wife, expanded his family and adopted many other children, not legally. <laughs> some were sports oriented and some not. Some stayed with us and some left. We could take a few strides back where he started teaching at Aberdeen All Age. And who, who would have thought this would become his life? His next venture was teaching mathematics at Magati Secondary School between 1977 and 1980. September 1980, he started a new venture at a new institution, which he never knew would have impacted his life in the way it did. Word. While he started as a maths teacher, would you believe he coached the Stets team to the Headley Cup titles? Well, yes, he did. Remember, I mentioned his love for the three things other than his family. Well, in 1983, he started coaching track and field. And this is where the family started to expand. He started off coaching the girls team in 1984. He won Western Girls Shops. He went on to coach the team for 17 years, losing Western Champs twice. During this period, the girls team placed third at the National Champs behind Veer Technical and St. Jago High. He also went on to win two 4x800 meter relay at the Penn Relays. While teaching and coaching in 1992, he became the director of the State's Invitational Chat Meet, and this venture ended in 2005, where he passed the baton to Ronaldo Walcott. Sometimes you wonder how he managed all this. Well, he took up the post, president of COCA, County of Cornwall Amateur Athletic Association, in 1995, and his tenure ended in 2012. 
He serves his association well and never yet disappoints. He serves as sports coordinator, coordinator, grade coordinator, while being the head department of our maths and PE department. We talk about leaving footprints on person's heart. Few strides back, while bouncing on the back stretch, he met some persons who became acquaintances, friends, and family. He was active in his community, go above and beyond. He ran youth club, played cricket, and through this, he found lifetime friends and family. I didn't want to call, start calling names because I would be standing here for another two hours. But I have to make it mention of a few like Fraser, Carpy, John, Shaper, Welly, Ronaldo, Paul Adams, Len Vass, the others know themselves. They all inspired him in some way as he did for them. And through this bond, they all became a family. Aye, aye, aye. Me? Third leg. Good evening. <laughs> Third leg. Yes. Third leg. Third leg. Mm -hmm. Even though he already had a career, that did not stop him from getting one of the best time on his legs, on this leg of his career. Eddie didn't let anything stop him from attaining what he wanted and needed. So this leg, he started studying after work. He would travel up the hills to church teacher college along with his life partner, where he acquired a bachelor of education degree with honors majoring in mathematics. He didn't stop learning and expanding himself in the education sector and track and field with his passion for the classroom. Who have thought she would stop having contact periods for classes in 2009? No, in 2009. Wait. Classes. Who have thought? She would he. stop having. Who is she? He. He. Oh, he. Oh, that's she. He. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> In 2009, I don't have a first. <laughs> yeah. To 2014, he served the school by attaining the position as vice principal, and he never stopped teaching and coaching. He never feels, no matter what area, he's pleased because he's pleased because. Failure was never an option. Even then he would still do what he had teach and teach much. He would, even then he would still do that. And teach much. Yeah, and teach much. He took care of and interact with all the students like they were his own, especially his athletes. And he even assisted monetary on a daily basis. He never stopped loving, caring for his students and athletes. In some cases, he even takes them home. Bless him. <laughs> uh, because of the person he was, and how involved he was in his community, the parish, and believe me, across the country, once he called upon to assist with sports, he's always ready. For this, he was recognized by many, such as her parish, his parish, and he was there for his voluntary service in sports and education. By St. Elizabeth Technical High School, Milo Western Champs, Western Relays, JTA, Aberdeen Primary, and Junior High, ISA, SDC, and COCAA. COCA. Told you it would be entertaining. Told you he continued to stride beautifully and with backstretch. He took on the title of Justice of Peace and continued to Irish and country proudly. Fort Lee. Sis. Run blistering 400 leg. He had regular visit to the doctors for his regular checkups. 14, he had a scare 
when he experienced a minor heart attack. He went for a regular checkups and was on the move again. Because that only led him to retire from teaching, but his love for athletics. He continued to coach and had some boys and girls he treated as his own. On Thursday, January 5th, 2023, after having his family exactly. for the holidays, to the Hargreaves Memorial Hospital in Mandeville, where he was admitted the day before his grandchildren and daughter departed the island. Speaking for them, because the day before they were all happy and on the road enjoying themselves and making memories which will stay with us forever. Each day we could expect anything. After spending three weeks in the hospital and receiving visitors every day, he was sent home to be with his family. Little did we know that was the time we were spending would become memories in such short time. Every second, minute, hour, and day was precious. Daddy loved God. On February 11th, 2023, he ran his best leg ever. He ran his rough glory. Elder will tell us, weep not for me, though I'm gone into the gentle night. Grieve if you will, but not for long upon my soul's sweet flight. There is no need for tears, I am at peace, my soul is at rest. There is no pain, I suffer not for, with your love I was blessed. I am in a place of comfort, the fear now is gone, but those things out of your thoughts, in your memory, remember, not the strife. Please do not dwell upon my death, but celebrate my life. Yes. To his children, grandchildren, and great-grand, he will tell them, life is an opportunity, take it. Life is a puzzle, solve it. Life is a game, play it. Life, learn to care and not fear. To his brothers and sisters, life would not be the same without your kind words and your gentle touch and your shoulder to cry on. Grandchildren and two great grandchildren, nieces and nephew, may his soul continue to rest in eternal peace. Come on, let's give them a round. I invite Pastor Green Huggins to come and pray for the family. So can I have the entire family of Maya Smith to stand, immediate and extended family, to stand as I invite Pastor Green Huggins to pray for the family, wherever you are as a family. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. I give you thanks for all you have done. I am so blessed. My soul is at rest. Oh Lord, I give you thanks. I wouldn't say So oh. 
turn our God and our Father, we want to thank you. We thank you for all that you have done. We thank you, mighty God, for this moment that we are alive. We thank you, we give you all the glory which is due unto your name. For you are God and God alone. And this afternoon, mighty God, as your children, mighty God, go through this period of grief and sorrow. Mighty God, you promise that you will be with them, you will be with us. Whatever and wherever life takes us, you will be there with us. And so, God, on behalf, Lord, mighty God, I, I just want to give you the glory for them, mighty God, a servant has passed. But Lord, you will be with them. So we ask this afternoon that your presence will abide with them. God, you will undergird them, you will cover them, you will protect them, you will be with them. You will show them the way, help them, mighty God, to understand that it is not over until you say it's over. Father, we present them to you right now, God, from the smallest to the biggest yours we ask for your blood covering right now take shield and buckler lord and stand up for their help defend them on every side almighty god be yourself the way for them these are not you. you may be seated as we begin to take mr smith on his final Can I just ask everyone just for a moment as we give you some instructions? Amen. Amen. We are going to be going to the Warwood family plot where we will take Adamai on the last leg of his journey. And so the casket will be leaving, followed with the, by the immediate family and then the rest of the congregation. And so I like everybody just to just make sure that we give the, the undertakers room just to make sure that we can make our way to the plot. Is that okay, everyone? Amen. So as we prepare, to leave. I'm going to ask that there is a recessional here in people like you. So just to add to those set, set of instructions. Pass in the school and we'll continue on to Bowood Road. We're passing the house, the family house, and then on to the family plot um, further you will kindly assist us in maintaining a one-way roadway. So if it's that you're going along Centre Road around to Borwood Road, you may not want to do that unless you're it's going along Centre Road onto um, the main road and then in around to Borwood. That's a driving road. But of course, if you're walking, you can just follow through. Um, Back right at Cross Pass for those who are familiar with the area, and then we will um, walk just about 150 meters to the graveside. Thank you. Thank you. After we leave the burial plot, there will be refreshments at the family home. That's the family, the Smith family home. There will be refreshments, and we will join you there. Family, the Simit family, and the Powell family, just to come and let us huddle around for the last, for the last lap here. So the Simit and the Powell family, okay. You're the car. 
time to help a stranger in the rain. There's a place for people like you. If you stand up for those down on their knees and lend a voice to those who cannot speak. If you shine a little light, give sight to the one who lost the way. There's a place for people like you. I heard of there's a street made of gold. And when you get there, there's a hand to hold. like you if you walk around with your heart on your sleeve if you want to be changed you want to see if you lay down your life for love so someone could be saved there's a place for people like you I heard 